happening right now on Sports Extra. Not the best road trip for the Braves as they dropped a series they never should have to the Athletics, but there were plenty of bright spots, including a very welcome return. Back on home turf, the Falcons took to Mercedes-Benz Stadium Friday afternoon for another OTA. What exactly are we seeing from this team? And Trey Talks, the Hawks point guard, has launched a brand new podcast, and he's got some pretty interesting things to say. Our thoughts about all of that coming up. And of course, we have so much more to talk about. Join us. Sports Extra starts right now. Sunday, everybody. The Braves' six-game road trip is over, and what a win they got on Sunday, huh? Exactly what they needed heading into that big series against the Mets that's coming up later this week. But first, let's get right into it, and let me direct your attention to this. The Braves with a nice come-from-behind victory this afternoon out in Phoenix. Michael Soroka may be left in there a little too long, but hey, thanks to Eddie Rosario, they got the dub. A two-out grand slam. Check out that granny in the top of the ninth, and the Braves win the series against the D-backs. Shades of 2021 from Eddie Rosario. Let's bring in my friends. We've got home team Brandon Leak who brought dinner tonight, so I appreciate that. That is always welcome. You feed me opportunities. At least I can do is feed everybody. <laughs> it was great too. I loved it. And also my girl Sarah Spencer is here. Great to see you as always. Thank you so much. I didn't bring. I should have brought dinner. I'm not I know. prepared enough. <laughs> That's okay. You can bring dinner next time. Okay. We'll keep the tab running. <laughs> uh, let's start with you, home team, because this was a really up and down road trip for the Braves. Six games are over. They split three and three. That series against the Athletics, not great, but good things against the Diamondbacks. What stood out to you? Uh, being clutch, and yeah. that's what they're going to have to do uh, until we find out what the rotation is going to be, who's going to be healthy, who's not going to be healthy. The Braves are going to have to win these clutch games and these close games with their offense. They're stacked, been up and down, and that's what happens in a long baseball season. Uh, but it works best when the bottom of the order is producing like the top of the order. And I think uh, that is a fun way and the right way to win a series when you're down to your last at bat and you can either lose a series or you can take one and win it. Same thing happened on the way out of Oakland where they said, Salvage the series. You need to get swept or make something positive happen, and that's what they did today. And this is a team who offensively has struggled a little bit recently, but you saw Sarah earlier, Ronald Acuna Jr. over the weekend, 464-foot home run. This kid continues to impress every single time he's at the plate. How can something like that spark this offense? We saw a little bit of it on Sunday. I mean, I think it's a huge spark for the offense, and it's one that they, they really needed because the Braves hitting has been touch and go yeah. on this on this road trip and really just recently overall. I think that's huge for this Braves team. Uh, just the consistency from Ronald Acuna has been really big, especially when you think of the Braves still have two starting pitchers on the I.L. The bullpen has been struggling overall. So honestly, I think if one of the biggest reasons the Braves have been struggling is that that offense wasn't there for them. So if they get that from, from Ronald Acuna, and if other guys can find a rhythm here, that's going to be big for this Braves team. He's such a spark guy. He's really contagious. His energy, it's so infectious throughout the entire lineup. Again, you saw that on Sunday. Let's talk about a very um, anticipated return, Michael Soroka. He comes back for the first time in over 1,000 days on Monday. Let's not talk about Sunday yet, just on Monday, his first time back. What were your emotions when you saw him come back to the big league. It was always great to see someone overcome injury and then when you have it early in your career you don't know how that's going to impact somebody on their return. So uh, good to see him. It was fun just to watch a guy come back and be able to get out there and you know look somewhat like himself. His first game uh, fastball and the changeup working early but then uh, succumb to some home runs and you know his first time being back. So I think this is a long term approach. Double uh, A has been very very upfront. They didn't bring him up just to see what he had. They brought him up when they thought he could stick around for the rest of the season. And so we're going to have to go through some bumps just like the other pitchers in the rotation. Right now we have to uh, count on Spencer Strider and Bryce Elder. Those have been the two most consistent guys. And like I said before, the bats have to make up for anything Michael Soroka or anybody else doesn't do Doesn't do uh, when you talk about trying to get six innings out of a guy who has to come out after he's had a, a pretty tough last two years. You made a really good point talking about double A and they didn't want to bring him up until they could see that he could be consistent. The Braves have been adamant about that as well. They didn't want to call him up to the big leagues unless he was going to stay there. Let's take a look at what Michael Soroka has done over the weekend. Just a couple of his stats. Now look, on Sunday, he really struggled. I mean, he gave up five runs and all of those coming on two outs. I think one thing that we need to remember, guys, is that patience will be key when you're talking about Michael Soroka and Sarah. One of the big things that I'm sure you've noticed is that 
a lot of people aren't very patient, right? They want Soroka to be exactly where he was three years ago. But what do you need to see for Michael Soroka to have confidence in him again? I mean, this is the Braves, and the bar is so high. Honestly, not just with Michael Soroka, with the Braves in general. You lose two games to the A's, and it's like the sky's falling. But there's more games than just that. So you have to look at the big picture. And I think with Michael Soroka, I cannot imagine the amount of mental fortitude it takes yeah. to go through what he went through getting injured getting re-injured and that's gonna take some while even it, that's gonna take a while even just physically and mentally to come back from that so two outings not exactly what you want to see I thought the first outing was pretty good there were just a couple pitches that he maybe hung that he, he didn't he would like to have back but other than that I mean I, I think I think the future is bright for him I think it's just a matter of time it's easy to forget in the moment though it's let's, so easy to forget in the moment yeah and let's also not forget that the Diamondbacks they can hit the baseball so that was a really tough matchup for Michael Soroka I think everyone knew that going in but again I think patience and time and maybe he will get back on the right terms that we know he can let's talk about injuries because there's been quite a few of them we have discussed them a little bit so far they've plagued the bullpen but the bullpen continues to have issues home team we saw a big league debut today AJ Smith Shaver he got his first big league debut three really good outings from him but other than that where can you find consistency in that group well the funny part is you were supposed to already have it you know the, the hopefully the woes with AJ Minter are over his yeah. roller coaster last month was really surprising and then Rice Ali Glacius had a few hiccups look nobody's gonna be perfect in the bullpen it's just the the narrative that's going on right now with the uncertainty with the starting pitching when you do have close games you can't have the bullpen lose your games when they are winnable so if you get out hit and you're behind fine it happens but don't give up winnable games don't walk guys and don't give teams the ability to look at some film and say hey if this guy is off this last couple of weeks these last couple of weeks we can get to him and give him a little bit of extra oomph to come back and beat the Braves but overall I, I feel confident that the mix of arms and veterans will get them to where they need to be. Iglesias made me nervous for a second today I'm not gonna lie. The walk see that that's what we're talking about. Yes. You don't come out with four straight balls to put us in an uneven place but you got to double play you get out you get the win. <laughs> did get out and get the win. Uh, you did bring up a really good point earlier that Spencer Strider and Bryce Elder have been really clutch for this team. Let's go to the starting rotation Sarah because Spencer Strider he broke that Diamondbacks six game win streak. He is incredible every time he goes out there to the mound. How much can his contributions continue to do for this team? I mean, honestly, I think the Braves are going to kind of rely on the consistency, the consi consistency that Spencer Strider brings mm -hmm. on the mound. Uh, fastest guy to 100 strikeouts this season. And it feels like it, too. He's just so dominant on the mound for this Braves team. I think Spencer Strider's leadership and just his stuff and his execution is going to be crucial to the Braves, especially with all the pitching woes that are unfortunately sticking around for this team. Perfect time to have a kid like that in your starting rotation. Also a perfect time to bring up the team that everyone loves to talk about, the New York Mets. By the way, they got swept this weekend uh, by, by the Blue Jays, so round of applause for all you Braves fans out there. But this is coming up on Tuesday. The Braves will be off tomorrow after traveling back from the desert. This is a crucial series. It always is, but it is because the margin of error is pretty slim now in the NL East home team. What do you need to see against the Mets? Uh, a winning series, and, and that's what you need. You, need you want to... a sweep or you just want to win? No, you'll take two out of three. We're okay. not in a position where you can just start throwing out sweeps. <laughs> Just because you I just want to them. check. I just want to check. You know, <laughs> not doing what you did against Oakland. Uh, you know, falling behind in the series early. And the other things, the things that we do need to talk about. Uh, whatever's going on at third base the last couple of years. Uh, the errors that have been popping up that, are, that have the Braves on a pace to be a worse defensive team statistically than they were last year. Those things. Don't kick the ball around. Don't give those guys, because they do have some professional hitters uh, that can make you pay. And they're also dealing with some injury as well. So, uh, Put yourself in the best position to win and find a way to stay over 500. That's another weird thing about this version of the Braves. Yeah. They haven't been as dominant at home as they've been on the road. So hopefully this is the homestand that turns that around. And one thing we know about what this homestand will bring is fans to the ballpark. Oh, yeah. It's going to be nuts on Tuesday through Thursday. I'm trying to remember what day of the week it was, but we made it, we made it. The Mets and the Braves starting on Tuesday. All right, coming up, the Falcons are back inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Friday for another OTA, this time in front of a lot of fans. Our takeaways, home team was there as we head into the final week of OTAs after the break. Welcome back, everybody. The Atlanta Falcons brought their OTAs back to the Benz on Friday afternoon, and this is a team that will potentially have a lot of young starters, specifically on offense. And with that youth, the team approach will be to coach the players hard, even harder, even if there are mistakes at this stage of the offseason. If we feel like we baby them, we're not getting them ready to play on Sunday. It's going to be really hard September 10th. 
And so for guys the first time, we got to go train them for the job they're going to do. And so we, we believe in that. This is non-contact, but there's a lot of things we want to push the limits to and make it tough on them, especially mentally. It's about mental con conditioning as well. Home team, you were out there at OTAs. Obviously, this is voluntary, so there are veterans that do not show up to OTAs, which is okay, but you got to see firsthand the intensity that they're talking about. Did you see a little bit of that? You did, and that's one of the things you heard Arthur Smith talk about, that he wanted not only the veterans, the new guys, a bunch of new veterans, um, but uh, the guys that are going to make the team in August be out there under pressure, and all he wants you to do is know what your responsibilities are. Learn the playbook, learn the install the way you need to at the right speed, and that's one of the things you look for. When you go to OTAs, you want to look at three things. Uh, whistle blowing when people have to stop the drills, <laughs> head shaking from the coaches, and swearing. And so if you don't have all three of those, then you have a pretty good OTA session going on. And I think that's what they did. I think overall the Falcons coaching staff had to be proud that, you know, the youngsters knew what they were supposed to do. They did go quickly. They did throw some things that were different at them. And uh, it showed that they are professional and ready to deal with the next set of install that the team throws at them. Any head shaking? Uh, there was a few head shaking, but not the whistle <laughs> okay. or the swearing. So what a whole lot of that. Count. Yeah, yeah so need just, a swear count. Just you know one out of three. <laughs> we'll start counting that next year. Okay, you'll start. We'll keep tabs on that, and I'll go to you for all of that stuff. Okay, <laughs> Sarah, players have already been really outspoken about what they think is going to happen on the defensive side of the football. Specifically, they got a new coordinator, Ryan Nielsen, who everyone that talks about him believes in what he's told them so far. He's getting his hands on these defensive players. He said physicality, and he wants to see violence from this defense. You think that side of the ball can really get that much better next season? I think it can get better for a couple reasons. One of them is just you do get a mental fresh start under a new defensive coordinator who's going to come in with high expectations. I think the Falcons' pass rush has been pretty unacceptable the last couple years. It's just not going to get it done, and we've seen the evidence of that. I like the Clay Campbell signing. I, I think there's a lot of things that can make the Falcons more competitive on that side of the ball. But mentality is a big part of that, and I like what I'm hearing from the Falcons so far, but you can like what you hear and still not like what you see come the actual season so we'll, we'll see how it actually pays off but I'm liking what I'm hearing so far you're you're optimistic I'm optim I'm cautiously optimistic we love cautious optimism <laughs> around here and one thing that Ryan Nielsen speaking of loving he doesn't love to label schemes when it comes to defensive talk you heard him about a month ago his first time he was in flowery branch and he was like I don't like to call base defenses I'm just gonna run whatever I run we know he labels things. It's okay, but he says he's not going to. Uh, but this is something you mentioned, the pass rush. The defensive line is something Ryan Nielsen has a lot of experience with. Every job he's ever had, he's worked with the defensive line. Pass rush, Falcons. They're going to be okay? I, I think the D-line is going to be okay. The question is, will the edge rush sack guy show up? Because I think when you get uh, David Onyemata, you put yep. him next to Grady Jarrett, um, you have Calais Campbell, who's you know clearly uh, on the other side of the, the, the long term of his career, but still a guy who had multiple sacks last mm -hmm. year. I'm thinking that the uh, number of guys that you have in the rotation that they will have might make some of the players who are already on the roster a little better. Maybe Maybe Arnold Ibakati is able to feast because the defensive line is going to be able to really mess up strategy and really mess up a lot of things that offensive lines want to do. So I think uh, Ryan Nielsen likes what he has. I think the biggest thing is he has veterans. When he comes in for his first year, it's not a bunch of guys who are green and wet behind the ears. He's got some guys that have a resume, some sack numbers, and a little bit of nasty on their resume as well. And that, I think, is going to just trickle out into this entire defense. All the veterans I've spoken to so far are excited about that aspect that they can actually teach guys around them which is really cool Sarah let's wrap up with you you and I were talking when you first walked in the building and we were talking about running backs and wide receivers and I said okay there's some receivers that stood out in OTAs but you're gonna go a different route tell me which receiver you're excited to talk okay about. so Maria wanted me to talk about receivers <laughs> when I came in today and I told her I will talk about it but can I take can I do a little bit of a, of a reverse of course because Bijan Robinson has really good hands and yeah. can catch and I think that as much as I think he's really going to help this Falcons run game, I think he's one of the reasons why I was so excited that the Falcons got him is that 
this guy has a lot of different skills he can bring to the bring to the table. It's not just that he's an explosive runner. It's not just that he's athletic. He can catch out of the backfield. Uh, he's a good blocker. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that he's going to bring to this team. So there, that's me talking about receivers for Maria. That's okay. <laughs> I think that's great because look, so far all they've said is that Bijan Robinson will be all over the field. So you have a good point. You want to say something? I think he just needs to be Saquon Barkley like. Okay. You're not going to yes. have those numbers. Saquon Barkley had over 2,000 yards, but yeah. he had 700 yards receiving. You don't need that with Drake London and Kyle Pitts. If he gets 250, 300 yards, four receiving touchdowns, along with whatever he's able to do on the ground and hit some long home runs, I, I think the passing game, you do have to count him as one of your wide receivers. It's yes. a great problem to have too many weapons on offense. I know that Arthur Smith is just drooling whenever he gets out there for practice. All right, guys, let's talk about something real quick. Out of the annual spring meetings in Destin for the SEC, we learned that in 2024, when the conference does expand from 14 to 16 teams. They're going to do away with all divisions together. Kind of weird. They stick with the eight-game conference slate and the SEC championship will be played between the top two teams in the league. Home team, what do you think about this eight-game conference schedule? Remember, this is currently an eight-game conference schedule for the 14. 16, they're going to stay the same. What do you think? I think it's better for the college football fan and the college football fan that actually goes to attend okay. the games because then you start to eliminate some of the games where there's no competition and you really don't get anything but to know that you're going to win and you don't really get the best bang for your buck. I think the other thing, too, is uh, you do away with divisions. It certainly is going to be different. We're turning the page on what college football used to be to what it is now. So you're going to have a situation where the tiebreakers will be out there. I think the best thing is you'll see teams that you don't normally see yep. more often when you used to see them just so long and far in between. And so now it's time to put those things away, get more SEC games, and get more old school teams playing old school teams on a regular basis. One permanent opponent, seven that will rotate. So it certainly will be very interesting. Okay, coming up next, Trey Young launching a brand new podcast this week, and he's got some things to say. Hear from the Hawk Star right after the break. All right, welcome back, everybody. One thing that's been really trendy among professional athletes is using social media platforms in order to control their own narratives. And Hawkstar point guard Trey Young, he is doing that now with the launch of his brand new podcast. I'm going to play a few clips from episode one, and you guys are going to react to it, okay? We'll start with where his motivation is coming from. A lot of things that people will say to me or what people think will motivate me uh, don't necessarily motivate me anymore. I have certain goals and certain things that motivate me and that pushed me to to be where I'm where I'm going to be someday. Yep. And uh that that's all it's going to that's all it's going to take for me to get that. It's not going to I'm not going to need any external motivation. Tom team, what do you think? I can take him at his word for that. I mean, you know, look, he's already been an all-star. He's been to Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, he's had success. They've had some failures. They've had a lot of turnover. So um, I could take him at his word for that. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm. I'm I don't think I'm. I'm going to have a problem with the podcast. You know, as long as it doesn't <laughs> become a refuge of dodging tough questions. Yes. And so I think that's uh, he addressed some things, and I think that was okay to answer the question that way. Yeah, that's the one thing that we're all worried about, right? Is I will tell you in the podcast and not tell you yes. in person. That's what we're worried about but we continue with all the changes this season you kind of mentioned it Quinn Snyder coming along DJ DeJounte Murray coming in there was a lot of talk about how Trey didn't or did not gel with new coaches and teammates here's some of his comments on the dynamic with everybody losing uh coach Nate um I mean everybody always they can say what they want yeah. uh, me and him had a really good relationship bringing Quinn in this year halfway I think is a game changer for us mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you and uh, I mean, just for what he brings, like his mental and um, just him being a, I mean, a, a real uh, teacher from from everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, he teaches everybody um, from the coaches to the players all day. And he's always ta talking during practices. Yep. It's uh, it's been a, a different transition with those two coaches, but this season was up and down one. I mean, getting Dejounte was really good for our team. Absolutely. Uh, we both wanted it to be even better than how it ended. All right, Sarah, go ahead. I mean, I think with what he said about, with what Trey said about Nate, 
McMillan and the way Nate left, what's he going to say? He's not going to yeah. say we didn't get along. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I, I see what he's saying there. Um, and I think it's good. You're kind of, you don't want there to be the appearance of any kind of burned bridge or sure. anything like that. I do think it's noteworthy though, that he said getting Quinn Snyder is a game changer for the Hawks. I happen to agree. I think that can be a game changer for them. Once Quinn Snyder has enough time under his belt with this Hawks team. And then the same thing with DeJounte Murray. I, I think the way that both Trey and DeJounte sometimes need the ball I don't think that that's necessarily gonna doom this pairing I think these guys can still work together well I think it's just a matter of time so that I mean that's pretty encouraging for me yeah and you can actually tell that Trey really does like Quinn a lot he's mentioned him many times and how smart he thinks he is and how he was excited for next season but what's interesting is we saw Trey at a couple of postseason Lakers games okay a lot of people talking about it here's what he had to say on his attendance at those games a lot of people made a lot of things out of me being at games, and I mean, who knows uh, what what it is? But um, no, nah, I'm a fan of the game. Hey, home team, you got to go real fast here. What did you think about that? <laughs> He's represented by Clutch Sports. He was out of the playoffs, so he took a trip to go see a playoff game. I don't have a problem with that. I think uh, you know those things can get blown out of proportion, and a lot of other players have gone to watch playoff games with other players as well. I think for just a recommendation, next podcast, why do you get uh, Lloyd Pierce and Nate McMillan on? That would be some fire. I think a lot of people would want to see. Oh, my gosh, I would tune in. I would if tune in. I'd be in. I'd be in. Popcorn, I'd be in. I'd be great. Uh, All right, guys, real quick, NBA Finals predictions go nuggets in six nuggets in six heat and seven baby let's Woo! go not just because i'm from florida, south florida, florida. florida. No, not just because why? no it's because people are literally counting them out of everything so i'm going to count them in all right we'll be right back all right guys the best part about otas and then training camp later this summer are the babies look at grady's little boy i personally love the dinosaurs because it's like a little <laughs> educational it's, it's so a good. little sports all in one and then oh the cheerleader <laughs> I love it. You got two great daddies and two more Falcon fans in the building. It was going to be Falcons for life. I love it. That's a great look for both of those guys. I cannot so wait until those babies are running around this summer. You guys, thanks for joining me, and we will see you next Sunday. Happy week, everybody. Hey, and go Panthers.